right? It's partly just, uh, I'm wondering if there's some rhetorical structure involved here. So just your thoughts on it or anyone else who knows better than me, but um, yeah. Christians are first on the sin martyr. Adrinda, Navala Dinaro, Naminda, Yavaglu Christians on the top martyr, or Gondu guilty feeling irate. So almost all of humanity is repenting continuously. E illi in Jaina thought, whereas it, it said that you're harming human beings. Is it just a rhetorical thing? Is it just, uh, just to let us off uh, the hook if I want to? No, every day in so. the evening. Uh, the householders and also the monks in the evening before going to bed, they have some pratikramanas. That is repenting for what they have done on that day. That is auditing, self-auditing takes place. See, to what extent the giants uh, 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 went uh, interpreting and following it means, for me, I just walked from that place to this place. Whereas, if there is a monk here, he would not have walked like me. He would have walked like this, looking in front of his only to, up to the length of six feet. Vandu Nagaduddha, or Ek Purusha Pramana. Only up to that he looks, and uh, if there are any small creatures, he avoid. If there are ants, or there are any big ants, or small ants, to avoid that, uh, he walks in a different way, not in, like me. Huh? The, the, to this extent, the Jain monks went uh, practicing that. That is possible for them. They experimented on themselves only, and uh, uh, to what extent possible they followed. Here it is said, see, absolute non-violence makes your life impossible. Accepted it is. That is why to the possible extent, do not hiding your capacity, you follow. That is what said. So guilt illa. See, for that guilt only, they repent. Pratikramana, it is said. Every day there is pratikramana, the self auditing. Aluchana part. Aluchana part. See, not necessarily that I only should answer. You are more uh, knowledgeable. There is a prayer known as Alochana Pat in which every householder repeated uh, there are different types in which they conduct the Hinsa and for that they apologize themselves. So this is a practice. Your question that they are not very sincere as, uh, as in Christianity, of course it seems, but there is a regular practice among the Jain householder that they recite the house, uh, Alochana part and this, the different ways, uh, like in washing, in traveling, in daily household works, they perform the uh, violence and they apologize for that. <laughs> To self, to self, to self. But, uh, my, my violence is to someone. I should be... See, before... Yes. See, so, so he, he is saying... He is the beings they have heard. See, yeah, if I... What you are saying to myself... I'm no, no, it is not... So, they me. give one example. How Himsa takes place to self. Huh? He wants to kill... A person wants to kill his enemy. Uh, putting a... a hot iron on him iron ball on him. To put the hot iron ball on him, he should hold it first. When he holds, first he is hurt. Before the enemy is being hurt, he is hurt. Like that, when you think of doing himsa, intentional himsa and internal, before the bahiranga himsa, internal himsa takes place. I just want to make a comment on coming back to that rhetorical question. I think the di at least maybe, you know, just a comment. The difference is here in that you have this gradation between intentional and unintentional. So already there is a distinction between Christianity and Jainism in that sense. 
and that your your even this this mode of penitence that this prayer that you're talking it's, it all it almost seems like a kind of a ritual kind of thing you know that something so then if you if you apply it in that sense then it does become rhetorical in that sense right so it makes living in society knowing that you know and i think i i, I don't know i think of it in a very in a very abstract sense of a philosophy of life of non violence and then it, you cannot not take it to the extreme you cannot stop at violence that is only intentional you have to logically take it to violence that is unintentional and when you do that and then you grade the him, him the karma according to the himsas intentional and unintentional where there is less karma for unintentional and more karma for intentional then there is a philosophy of life then you can get out of it then there is a rhetoric at least <laughs> i think <laughs> thank you very much for your very good presentation uh, yes it is correct that uh, very right that absolute non violence is impossible and uh, it is very hard truth also hmm. that once the living is depending of others death it is hard truth if we are not doing anything but only for our living through respiration through breathing yeah that is what we are killing, killing innumerable yeah. of subtle living beings so it is very difficult to be free from hingsa second uh, is that uh, in the acharanga sutra it is uh, said that if you mix the water the water body being that is water the river water and the pond water mm. so it is hingsa if you mix the black soil and the red soil together it is also hingsa although these are all soils clays and if you mix that is also hingsa so that hing ahimsa is very much in a subtle way uh, have been described in jain Achara. scriptures yeah. Yeah, yeah scriptures one one just uh, query that uh, uh, do you find anywhere that uh, we say ahimsa ahimsa is is non violence or non injury do you find anywhere that any affirmative or positive term quand that in place of ahimsa why it is non violence oh. any positive term any affirmative term that denotes that it is non violence so it is very interesting also so we do not find that and even in acharanga sutra that you know hingsa ah. and after knowing hingsa you yeah. should be refrained from that activity so that is why it is but it is very interesting that ahimsa is not quand in a positive term it is always non violence non violence okay thank you uh, i just would like to uh, you know uh, make a comment you know you are talking about uh, two things one is on intentional ahimsa intentional intentional ahimsa like i no 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 intentional himsa like let me put it in other way uh. intentional ahimsa like i want to protect all the mosquitoes ants and everybody all those type of people uh, sorry creatures and another thing on intentional himsa on intentional himsa and intentional ahimsa i give a space between the two like a person is having a pan broker shop and he thinks that he is helping the other person by taking 300% interest and uh, all that he is uh, getting from him gold or house or whatever and he knows that the fellow can never redeem this man thinks that he is doing an intentional ahimsa by taking 300% interest but it is unintentional ahimsa for the person who is taking the money from this fellow are you getting the is it clear now you know jains a jain will feel that it is absolute ahimsa for me to take the money because i have to make a livelihood and it involves a small quantity of ahimsa does not matter can be you know bust out but the other man thinks at the end of the day when he does not pay his uh, either, you know the Great. money back his house is gone his property is gone and everything is gone what a type of violent fellow this fellow is 
and he has taken these things. See, the himsa and ahimsa are bordering on such feeble grounds, you cannot make a final judgment on this. And any ahimsa stands on himsa, any himsa stands on ahimsa. Therefore, join us like a analysis of ahimsa and himsa are not definitive. Uh, it uh, actually asks what happens if you put Syadvada on himself. Syadvada. The Udharana may not be. The other way to put this question is, is Himsa and Ahimsa a subjective judgment of oneself or is it how others see it? Because I may be doing something which is, uh, the Jiva is right, but at one point of time, if I kill a Jiva, and let us say it is the penultimate time of that Jiva, uh, <coughs> as an Udharana, and I kill that Jiva, and that Nigoda immediately gets Mukti, because its life has been ended by me. It then is not called Mukti, it is only a death. Okay, death, but at that time, let's say it's a penultimate and it immediately, uh, let's say it's, it's some jina who is there as a small animal and it immediately gets, it can go to moksha the, at any level. So, if it gets moksha or not a better, better no. life, it won't get. See? Let me just finish the question. So I, I'm putting his question in an understandable way. Is it from the perspective of that jiva, or is it from my perspective that himsa or ahimsa is delineated? That is his question. That Hindu can get jiva, uh, moksha. Ah, not it cannot get moksha. Yeah, it, okay. it cannot get moksha. So you have to explain that. Yeah, <laughs> have to explain. Yeah, so that, that, because I'm just rephrasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re, uh, is it from my perspective uh, yeah. or from the other person's perspective? See, your example of the pawnbroker, if he is doing it, which is against the law, which is against the law, and more than that, if it is against the uh, human behavior, it is himsa, and he cannot get rid of that, he has to undergo the uh, punishments according to the law of karma, according to the law. He cannot escape. He may escape from the income tax people. He may escape from the surrounding people. But he cannot escape from the... <laughs> huh? No, no, it is intentional only. It is intentional. You can't say it is unintentional. If you stay... Illegitimate. It is illegitimate. Illegal. Knowing fully well what is right and what is wrong, still they are doing wrong means they are like any other paper man who is taking uh, heavy interest. In no way he is different. Because he, is far, he was born in a uh, Jain family or uh, his uh, surname is Jain, that uh, he is 100% uh, uh, Jain in all his activities. No. Not by birth, one can not be a giant. Not by birth. Sir, I agree with your point that... Uh, no, you disagree uh, also. I am very happy. No, one, of, one of the points, not, not, not this one, like uh. Uh, uh, absolute ahimsa is almost an impossibility. There may be a gradation of it. Yeah. And uh, there may be a, it may be a limiting process. But, but when it comes to intellectual ahimsa, a term uh, which has been used mm -hmm. frequently, isn't that an oxymoron? Like, uh, it's an impossibility. Or maybe every in, uh, intellectual exercise, for that matter, has to be intentional. Every utterance is violence. So, wouldn't that be an oxymoron? Like, intellectual ahimsa. See that uh, uh, intellectual ahimsa means what I, what I say, sadhvada in uh, Anekantavada, what I say is correct, but uh, <coughs> what he is saying, the possibility of the correctness may be there. You accept it. That is accepting the possibilities of the truth in his statement gives you the, uh, the patience of uh, uh, listening to him at least. If you negate it, you cannot be a ahimsa. Ahimsaka. Ahimsaka only, if you reject it without giving an opportunity uh, for uh, his uh, interpretation, for, uh, it should uh, develop a, a kind of tolerance to listening to others. That is uh, the Anekantavada. 
principle. If there is something uh, which in Jaina metaphysics or uh, in the metaphysical language, which is termed as reality, hmm. uh, this Syadvada itself is violence to reality. Or uh, Explain the tolerance. It, no. Tolerance becomes. Huh? That means. Uh, how, how do you say it is uh, violence? Any Shadwada. amount of tolerance huh? would be violence to the ultimate truth then. What? Ultimate truth. Suppose ah. there is the something the out there as yes. which you can term as reality. reality. Then every the version of Syadvada or ev any approach based on Syadvada would be violence done, violence committed on truth, ultimate reality. So this is why every intellectual act is bound to be violent. No, it is pseudo-intellectual act. Th thank you for your talk. I just wanted to ask, um, I mean, Jaitan has been often criticized for showing more concern for nigodas than for human beings. Yes? Um, and if we were to judge by the amount of time we have devoted to discussing nigodas in this workshop, I think that you know, it might lend some credence to that. So I was, I was wondering if um, thinking of, you, men you mentioned justice, so thinking of uh, human justice, was wondering if uh, Jain scriptures would allow us to construe, for example, caste and gender discrimination as forms of himsa. Caste discrimination? Gender discrimination. Gender discrimination. Gender discrimination. Caste, caste and gender discrimination. Are they himsa or not? Huh? Are they himsa or not? How would Jainism see this discrimination? Social injustice. How would it see social injustice? See, uh, they look it from the point of uh, karma philosophy according to the karma philosophy, it is not a discrimination. It is not discrimination. Gender discrimination. I don't agree it is a gender discrimination. Because it is said, uh, it is uh, interpreted in many uh, seminars that uh, women have no moksha, according to Digambara sect. Nowhere it is said. In the women forum, there is no possibility of going to moksha. That is it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, not an ordinary man can uh, become the professor in this philosophy department. Who has become eligible to have that seat will become. And not everyone. You agree with this or not? No, no scripture said if you are born as a male, you are granted moksha. 